We'll go ahead and we'll begin. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to our virtual career day series with the Los Angeles Public Library. My name is Lynn Nguyen. I'm the young adult librarian at Chinatown Branch Library. And I'm here with my co-host, Amanda Charles, who uh, who is from Teamscape at Central Library. So Amanda can wave to you and you'll see her right there. <laughs> hi, oh, hi, Amanda. Uh, we're so excited to have you here for our weekly virtual career day series where we introduce amazing careers to you. Today we have two very special guest speakers from the FBI. For those of you that don't know, FBI stands for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Today we have Emily Swartz, who is the Community Outreach Specialist, and Yvette Rivera, who is a special agent. Wow. I first would like to extend my deepest thanks to them for being here today. Uh, my colleague, Diane Olivia Posner, who is the Principal Librarian Associate Director from the Exploration and Creativity Department for the Introductions, uh, our Youth Services Department and the Library Foundation for their support. And of course, uh, special thanks to Amanda for being my co-host here today. Uh, before we begin, I would like to go over some housekeeping rules. Um, your microphones are already muted and you do not need to have your videos turned on. Recording is in progress. To limit distractions, uh, you can uh, select your Zoom window to be full screen. If you wish to ask questions at any time during the program, you can type that into the chat box and we'll try our best to ask those questions for you. Or you can wait to our Q&A. We ask that you be respectful of the program today or during the program today. Personal views or anything that may be offensive will cause you to be removed from our program. We hope that you enjoy today's career day. Please remember to complete our very short survey that we'll be linking in the chat box at the end. So I'd like to start off with the program uh, with the quote by former FBI Director James Comey. The spine of the FBI is the rule of law. The spine of the FBI is the commitment to doing the right thing in the right way while protecting civil liberties. So with that being said, I'd like for you all to open up your chat box. The question I'd like to ask you is, what do you think people at the FBI do? So let's go ahead and open up the chat box. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so we have a lot of answers coming in. Um, I see here somebody wrote, they investi investigate crimes. What do you think, Emily? I, yeah, there's a lot of investigative crimes, that's for sure. Um, the bus undercover cases is interesting. <laughs> I don't know if you're implying that we do undercover or if we bust other people who are. Uh, we definitely mm -hmm. protect citizens, for sure. Um, there is, someone, I think, said that we do everything, which pretty much is true. Um, and yeah, we do everything from fighting crime to helping out the community. Catch serial killers. <laughs> I wish I got to do that. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, a lot of in yeah, investigate crimes at in an international level. That's true. We do help wow. with that. I love the answers. Track down murderers. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, very specific. <laughs> Well, you know, I feel like with the FBI, there's not a lot that we do know. And then what we do know, it's it's definitely uh, something that we see on TV a lot or we read in the books. So um, I'll go ahead. I would like to begin our interview with you, Emily. So Emily, please tell us about yourself and what you do at the FBI. So I'm Emily Swartz. Um, I'm a community outreach specialist. I've been with the FBI for four years now. Um, I've been a COS, as we call them, uh, since June of this year, so not too long. Um, so my main job is to essentially reach out to communities, um, in my case specifically American Indian communities as well as K through 12, and provide information regarding the FBI, you know, maybe spark some interest so then you guys might in the future want to apply and work for us. But um, Definitely just trying to bridge that gap where between what you see on television versus what, you know, your perceptions are and then kind of give you the truth um, of what we actually do. That's amazing. So how, uh, what were some of your jobs that you did before you became a uh, outreach specialist? Uh, so with the FBI, I was an operational, what's my, operational technician. Uh, it was just kind of essentially like a catch-all uh, entry-level position in which you assisted um, squads and agents on 
um, like filing, scanning, um, you know, a little bit of, you know, database checks here and there, um, but mostly just kind of um, assisting in any way that they needed. Uh, and then after that, I was promoted to a secretary for um, a supervisory, senior supervisory intelligence analyst. And so I, you know, essentially did, um, didn't have to answer phones, but I did handle like promotions and um, people's uh, performance reviews, making sure those were done on time. Um, and then I got the job as a COS. I wanted something a little different and something that kept me busy, which this definitely keeps me busy. <laughs> I'm so glad this job keeps you busy. Um, did you know that you were going to work for the FBI when you were a teen? I did. It was actually a dream since I was a young teenager. Um, it was what I always wanted to do, and I wanted to track down serial killers. <laughs> I wanted to be one of those people that gets to do all the profiling um, and you know gets to go after the really twisted people, but um, wasn't in the cards. <laughs> But I got lucky enough to actually work for the FBI in a different capacity. Um, unfortunately, to track down serial killers, you kind of have to work over in Virginia. So not exactly my dream location. Uh, rather just stay in SoCal. <laughs> so um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your your education path? What did you do after you graduated high school or um, what type of degree or major did you um, decide to get? So I'm a psychology major. I got my bachelor's in 2015. Um, I actually did two years at a community college in my hometown and then got my associate's degree in, I think they called it like social and behavioral sciences, but um, my emphasis was administration of justice and then um, went to Cal State LA and got my psychology degree. Um, and then shortly thereafter, um, I had to temp jobs for a little bit and then um, was finally able to start officially with the FBI about a year later. That's so cool. Um, what inspired you to choose this path of with the FBI? Was the application process really difficult when you applied? Uh, so I'm um, yes and no. Um, I was fortunate enough that the FBI actually came to my school, um, Cal State LA, and did the whole like information session, and then afterwards they conducted interviews. And then you were given like a conditional job offer, um, which basically said provided you, you know, pass certain criteria, then you are given a job with the FBI. And so once you um, go through all of that, you know, polygraph drug testing, um, then they're, you know, ready to you know, offer you a position. So I had found out that I had passed all of that, but never heard anything about whether or not I was when I was supposed to start. And so it took, I think, a year and a half total by the time that I had, like, interviewed and then actually got a start date. Um, so that was kind of, like, touch and go there because I was really worried. Um, the job that I was in at the time wanted me to stay on, like, permanently and long term. But I didn't feel like I should take it if I was just, like, within a month going to be leaving. Um, so that was kind of unsettling for me. I don't like not knowing what the <laughs> future is going to look like. Um, but it eventually worked out. So... Um, I'm happy that it did. We're so glad. Is there any special school or training that uh, you needed to work for the FBI? Uh, nothing any too specific. I think one of the nice things about the FBI is that there's lots of jobs. And so regardless of what you go to school for, there's definitely a place for you at the FBI. Um, one of my friends, her degree is in animal science. And um, we don't really do anything with animals. That's probably the one thing we don't actually do. Um, so she's an animal science major and she still works for the FBI um, and she loves it. So definitely just pursue what you are passionate about. And that way, at least you're happy in doing something you, you know, enjoy. And then um, then you'll find your place. And at the FBI, there's tons of jobs. I mean, obviously, there's specific ones like you want to be a lawyer or a forensic accountant. There's specific training or schooling you have to have. Um, but there is definitely a job out there where you don't necessarily even need a college degree. I suggest it because it makes it, your options are way more. Um, you're not so limited in what you can um, aspire to. But um, there's definitely like a place here for everybody. That's great news. Are you able to share a little bit of what the background check process is like? Um, you mentioned, did you mention polygraph or? 
Yes. So um, just everyone, ever, all employees have to undergo um, the polygraph process as well as um, drug testing. We have um, some strict qualifications with regards to those. Um, and, you, you know, you obviously, as most jobs, you have to have an interview. Um, so once you kind of go through those processes, different jobs have more specific um, application processes. Um, I'm sure that will mention some of the ones that are specific to special agents that not every position um, undergoes, um, but their polygraph drug testing and like interviewing, it's pretty much standard across any position. And then um, can you share with us, what are some of the biggest challenges and rewards as a community outreach specialist? So I hate public speaking. Surprise, I know. <laughs> um, actually took this job to hone those skills because I don't like speaking in public. Um, so I do, that one is definitely a challenge. Um, I'm very much an introvert in that like physical, or social interaction kind of like exhausts me in a way. <laughs> so um, definitely trying to um, push my limits in that sense and just kind of push out of my comfort zone um, in order to do this. And actually I love it because I get to essentially event plan for a living um, because I get to you know plan these kinds of events and work with great people like Yvette to come help me with my events and talk about their experiences and what they do. And so I get to meet a lot of new people, which is fantastic, even within the FBI that I've never met before. Um, so it's really nice that you um, that I do get to foster those relationships. Wonderful. And how has the pandemic affected your job? Made it a little difficult. <laughs> um, so we can't do anything in person. That's generally our like bread and butter. We do a lot of like in person um, presentations at schools or um, we host our own like teen academy but unfortunately we since we can't have anything in person everything's been moved to a more virtual environment so thankfully um, virtual platforms like this one allows us to actually reach um, more people and further because like our AOR extends like all the way to Orange County all the way to San Bernardino and Riverside counties and then as far north as um, San Luis Obispo County and so it makes it a lot easier to reach more people because then I don't have to necessarily drive there and go in person and I can do more of these events um, in like in any given day so it has its like pluses and minuses um, but it's definitely been a challenge which having to adapt to is a new a new skill I'm learning. <laughs> and um, does your company or does the FBI offer any internship opportunities? Yes so we have the um, it's called Honors Internship Program, and it's for uh, college students. So I believe this year they were um, sophomores and up, I believe. So you had to be a sophomore by 2021, uh, fall 2021. Um, so unfortunately, that just closed, but it'll reopen on um, summertime of next year. Um, and then you do get to, so you can work out of headquarters in DC or any of the 56 field offices. Um, and you just kind of indicate what locations you're interested in. Um, you will have to like pay your way to get there if you don't actually like live in that area. Um, like say you have family in you know Alabama and you want to work out of Birmingham, then you can do that. Um, but you would have to pay to get there. But you get to do a lot of experience. You get to um, assist with cases. You get to assist um, on all sorts of different things. And um, it's a really good way of like getting your foot in the door, especially if you're dead set on FBI, um, it's definitely a really good thing to have on your resume in order to promote within the FBI. That's good news to hear. Is it, um, what are some uh, resources that you can recommend to our audience that may be interested in applying for the FBI? So fbijobs.gov is a um, great resource, like anything you need to know about application process, specific jobs, um, openings. I highly suggest going there. It'll have everything you need to know on there. Um, if you want to learn more about the FBI in a more general way, um, FBI.gov has tons of information, um, even within the different like um, violations that we do work. It has information um, there as well. So those two things are really big. And then um, we do have like a LinkedIn page, I think, uh, that's handled by headquarters. They'll post information regarding like jobs, you can network. Um, I know like LinkedIn kind of like with your guys' generation is probably kind of older, but um, 
still something you can utilize. Um, and we do have a Facebook page. Uh, so it's like, I think you just search FBI, it'll come up. Um, as well as a Twitter page. Um, Los Angeles has its own Twitter page. And so we'll post on there if there's any sort of applications available. That's where we'll post about internship if it's open um, or the collegiate hiring initiative, as well as like any um, upcoming events that we ourselves are hosting. Um, so like Teen Academy or any other like events that we choose to um, host to the community. Uh, so definitely like a good idea to follow those just to kind of keep up to date on information. And then they'll also like post things regarding like COVID-19 scams or any sort of updates in general with regards to current um, crime concerns. Great information. Um, I would like to also ask you, uh, you know, if you could turn back time to your teenage <laughs> self, what, is, is there, do you have any advice that you would give to yourself or to all of our teens that are here today listening? So I had like a path set out of how I was going to do everything. Like I was going to do this for one year, then this, and then this, and um, life totally threw that out the window. So definitely not to worry too much about the future that it'll eventually work out. Obviously have a direction, but you don't necessarily have to have everything like laid out to the T um, cause life will always throw you curveballs. So definitely not to worry too much and that it will work out as it's meant to work out and um, kind of just, you know, go with the flow kind of deal. That's great advice. I have one question here from CL um, asking, and this might be something that you can answer. Uh, what are the chances of people getting hired before the uh, age 40? If people are 38, 39, is there an age limit? So for um, special agents, there is, and I believe it's 37 years old, but Yvette might correct me later on. Um, it's a little higher if you are former military. However, um, that's just because, it, yeah, it is 57 or 56. We may have changed it. Um, but that's just mainly because um, there is a mandatory retiring age for agents. And so in order for you to get your maximum retirement benefits, you have to work like 20 years. So you have to be 37 and then your mandatory um, retiring like in 57 then. Um, and so the, the, those are the only one that has like a requirement with regards to um, age limits. Um, all other positions, you can be as old as you wanna be um, and apply. I know we've had um, entry people coming in entry level that have like it's their third career, fourth career. Um, so lots of people, this not, FBI wasn't necessarily their first um, job that they did or even career that they started. Um, some people were teachers before, some did police officers, some were, you know, did military for a significant amount of time and then decided to shift gears. So um, you can definitely be older. It's not like something you have to do right out of college um, that you can, you know, you can join at any time in your life. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for the information. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my colleague, uh, Amanda Charles, uh, so we can interview Yvette. Thank you so much, Emily. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Emily, and thank you so much, Yvette, for, um, for participating in this program. This is so exciting. I've always wanted to like ask questions of FBI agents. I think you know you probably get a lot of the same questions from people, but I want to start off with um, uh, with the basics, uh, like. Uh, Yvette, did you always want to work for the FBI or is this something that you happened into? Yeah, um, it was actually unexpected. Um, 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 Lynn and uh, Emily and I were having a conversation earlier of how a lot of uh, students uh, sometimes are looking to be doctors and lawyers and I'm like, check, check. Um, I studied um, biology in undergrad in pursuit of getting a medical degree. Um, and um, and then I switched uh, sort of my thought of what career I would want to pursue um, later on and decided I want to be a lawyer. I applied to law school. Um, like most students had a lot of student loans. And so I deferred. And during that one year deferment period is when I came across the FBI website. And it was unexpectedly because I was just searching. Uh, I, I always like to tell, uh, especially um, students, is that you know we don't know what we don't know. So if someone you know has a party and they don't invite us, then we're probably not going to show up, right? So for me, it was a matter of uh, learning about the position um, and then deciding to apply to become an FBI agent. So 
how did you how did you make a decision? What appealed to you about working for the FBI? Yeah, um, I think the the most um, important thing um, that I was looking for was to contribute. So almost every job that I've ever had, um, okay. I've worked with families and kids, um, or served in like social service or public health um, with uh, public health programs like nonprofit organizations, and so. I, I wanted a job that allowed me to contribute. And, and I knew that this role would allow me to do that um, because they serve, the FBI serves in many capacities, the entire US, right? All these awesome cultures and, and, and individuals. And, um, and then the second piece of it was the challenge. Um, I, I am very lucky. I grew up with a very hardworking mom um, that worked in a factory, now works at the 99 cent store unloading the trucks um, for the merchandise. And so for me, it was, you know, even though I had no law enforcement experience, I learned through the through reading on the website that you didn't require that. Um, and so I thought, I thought, well, what's the worst it can say? No, but I, if I don't apply, I'll never be considered. And and I really just wanted to try, um, and not have any regrets. Um, and so, and so I went forward. <laughs> I, I figured, I figured, I know I'm a hard worker, and if afforded the opportunity, I would do whatever it takes. And if at the end of the day, I wasn't selected, then at least I tried. So um, can you talk about your educational path? Like specifically like, you know, what schools you went to and um, how your education prepared you for your job now? Absolutely. Um, so I took a longer route through undergrad. Um, I went through three, to three different colleges uh, before I finally graduated five years later um, with my bachelor's of science and biology. Um, and then once I, uh, completed my undergrad degree preparing for medical school. Um, I really thought that I wouldn't be as successful in medical school. I had heard it was very competitive and I really wanted to succeed. So I believed that if I got more life experience that that would help me prepare for med school. So I decided to look into volunteer programs such as AmeriCorps, Peace Corps, and I got accepted into a program in Chicago that allowed me to serve for a year in a shelter serving women and children who had fled domestic violence. And during that year, um, in preparation still on my, on my route to med school, I decided to get my master's. And it was there that that career shift came. You know, sometimes we talk to teachers or, or uh, friends or we have a job or an internship and something, something about that conversation leads us to kind of reconsider what we've always thought we wanted to do. And for me, at that time in grad school, I had three jobs. They mostly centered in public health, nonprofit. And I really started getting interested in public, in advocacy and uh, policy. And I thought that becoming a lawyer would allow me to fulfill that need of serving in that capacity. And so I applied to law school. Um, and as I mentioned before, I deferred. Um, and, and all those, and even though it kind of seems like I had, it's kind of all over the place, what I try to remind people is that, you know, goals change. Just like, you know, we might like yogurt three years ago. It might not be our favorite food. I know it's kind of oversimplifying, but um, I had goals and those goals changed. And therefore I pursued what my next goal was. Um, and then when I came across the FBI website and I, and I, and I saw that uh, to become an agent, I needed a degree. I thought, okay, great. I, I completed my degree. You needed um, at that time, you needed three years of full-time work experience, uh, which I had. Um, I thought, okay, well, um, and then specific skill sets. So unbeknownst to me, obviously, because I never realized that at the end of the day, I would be pursuing this awesome job that I love. Um, I had some of the skill sets that I believed filled some of the requirements. And so some of the skill sets that I believed I, I had at the time was my ability to work in a team environment, um, a lot of the work that I that I did before I applied to the FBI, it really involved working with with communities, with families, and you know when you're working in those situations, people entrust you with a lot of personal information, and um, it really allows you to really see how resilient people are and how much people go through, but they still move forward. Um, and I think that being able to see other people's experiences has allowed me to maybe. Uh, sort of understand, because I never can really understand fully, right? Who knows what someone's going through, right? It's impossible. But in this job, uh, as a special agent, you get to wear many hats. And I believe that uh, 
without knowing it, my my interactions with in serving in the community allowed me to kind of at least learn a little bit um, ab about what other people are going through, and that essentially uh, helped me uh, be a better investigator. So can, can you talk a little bit about what you do um, on a day-to-day -day basis, what your day looks like, and also what your job description is? What does it mean to be an investigator? <laughs> Sure. Um, so special agent, I feel like it's the best of both worlds, right? It's a very cerebral job in the sense that um, you get an investigation. And, and actually, as an agent on an investigative squad, you get multiple investigations. And based on the information you have, you're kind of putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And those pieces of the puzzle are determined largely on the information you acquire, whether it's through interviews, um, that maybe someone called in our FBI complaint uh, um, center and um, provided us with an information about an allegation of a federal uh, crime. Um, it might involve me looking through financial documents to determine, you know, is this is this money being derived from fraudulent means, and how do I prove prove that? Because as an investigator, my role is is both investigative, but then there's also a tactical component. And that's why I say it's the best of both worlds because, you know, going to the academy, being in that situation, learning, you know, um, the tactical training, that that was something new to me, but in a way it kind of pushes me. I find now that, you know, uh, running is my saving grace. I problem solve when I run. I, I, I feel like I can uh, do hard things because it pushes me to kind of continue on. I mean, there are many situations where you have to work long hours. Um, and so I think that that physical fitness component um, uh, helps us. And the FBI encourages that because, so our work week is, a, is a, about a 50 hour work week at a minimum. Uh, so a 10 hour, five days a week, um, we are considered to be available um, all the time in the sense that, um, you know, we've had situations where we've had, um, you know, an active shooting or some sort of other exigent circumstance that requires you to um, step up and, and, and assist and things like that. So, but in, in the standard work week is about a 50 hour work week at a, at a minimum. Um, and then within those 50 hours, we're permitted to work out three times a week. So one hour out of that 10 hour work day, three times a week, we get to work out. Um, and so the Bureau essentially is, is, is kind of encouraging you like keep your physical fitness. Um, there really isn't, and it's kind of funny in the FBI website, there really is a, there's actually a saying saying, <laughs> saying that the special agent career is not a, there's not a typical date, and there really isn't. Um, I have had the privilege of serving as an agent for 17 years, and initially I worked white collar, then I worked violent crimes. Those movements were initiated by me, so there's like a lot of opportunities to move to different investigative squads, the FBI enforces over 300 federal statutes. You know, for those students on the on the uh, on the call today, you know, your career is going to look very different when you become an FBI agent if that's what you decide to do, because you might be interested in public corruption or crimes against children or, um, you know, financial institution fraud. So, the 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 day to day varies depending on the investigation. So, as an example, in the white collar crime world, it's considered complex crime. So easily, you know, the very first case I got um, when I uh, uh, got to the LA office in January of 04 after graduating from the academy, um, I did my first search uh, about a year later. And, at the, and you get assigned multiple cases, but that was my first uh, search my own for my own case. And I remember it was four locations. My affidavit was like 70 pl plus pages long. Um, when you were preparing, you, yeah, go ahead. Can you um, define the affidavit? What does that mean? Sure. I was about, you read my mind. I was about to say that. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, no, no, it's okay. Good. No, that's, that's good. Um, we, you know, in the government, you know, we use a lot of acronyms and words and we're like, we assume that everyone knows, right? So yeah, an affidavit is a, is a, is a lengthy document that, t that I will then give to a judge to review. And that document um, and t has a lot of important information, right? It has the allegations, right? It's, it doesn't matter that I'm an FBI agent. My title is irrelevant. What matters is what evidence do I have, right? So I have to show a judge what information I have, right? What evidence I have that I obtained in a, whether it be review of financial documents, interviews, uh, toll records, um, you know, recordings, whatever it might be. 
to substantiate, to prove whatever I'm alleging. So in white collar, I worked healthcare fraud. Um, and unfortunately in those kind of investigations that I did, a lot of the victims were our grandparents who had Medicare and, and, and who people um, uh, targeted uh, to use their information for purposes of getting uh, medical equipment, right? So um, that was, that, those cases are long-term. But when I work violent crimes, my partner was an OC deputy sheriff and we worked extortion and fugitives and bank robberies. And um, I remember, you know, us going to respond to a bank robbery and then about a week later setting up surveillance to go arrest them. So they're considered, for lack of a better word, quick hits because they're a lot re more readily solvable. Now, now everything has caveats, but you could foreseeably lead to an arrest a lot quicker. Um, so it really just depends. And when you're the case agent working on, a, on an affidavit on that document, you could easily, you're working that collectively with the AUSA's office, that's the assistant United States attorney, going back and forth, ensuring that the information on that document is accurate, right? Um, because then you're gonna go to a judge and swear to the veracity of that document. And so you could be easily working 12 or more hours per day for consecutively until that document is done. Um, and so it, it fluctuates um, the time frame. So it really, unfortunately, I can't really say there's a there's an exact sort of time frame. Um, and then now I'm actually in the public affairs unit, um, and um, I get to do these type of events. Um, I I had seen a posting four years ago for this position, and I and I thought, well, I. I really love my job. If I can, you know, relay information to as many uh, people who are interested in learning about careers in the FBI, I want to do that. And so luckily I was um, allowed to be in this role and this is where I've been for the last four years. Thank you so much. So we've had a lot of questions come up in the chat. Um, and so I'm going to start with one of the earlier ones, which was um, the Academy. Um, everybody wants to know about the FBI uh -huh. Academy. There were TV shows, there's speculation, there's fiction. Give us the real scoop. Okay, so, well, I mean, I did go to the Academy 17 years ago, sort of, so so it's changed somewhat. But, so the Academy is designed um, to provide you with a foundation. So at the Academy, you will be able to learn uh, what the techniques are, what the foundation is of an interview, uh, of, of um, doing role player. So what they'll do is they'll set up a scenario where you're interviewing someone, you, they'll videotape you, and then you'll get feedback, not only from the role player and also from your teacher, um, because it's important to get it right, right? To learn, to learn about the, the things that we could do better, right? It's always ongoing learning. There's also tactical training. So there's classroom training where we learn concepts and then you go into, into what we refer to as Hogan's Alley. And at Hogan's Alley, it's, it's what you would say, it's a pretend city. We have a bank and we have a store and we have houses and it is there where you know, I would ask Lynn, Emily, and, and you, Amanda, and I, and we would all be paired up learning what we've learned in the classroom. And then the instructor would say, okay, go ahead, Lynn, um, you're the team leader. Go ahead and tell us who's gonna breach, who's gonna conduct the arrest, who's gonna do this. And we have a search warrant, uh, an arrest warrant, right? So there's certain protocol and you're being constantly evaluated on what you're doing on your, on your problem, solving your judgment. What do you do in a certain scenario? Um, do, is it according to FBI policy? And then you're getting constructive feedback. And then there's also firearms training where we have to be proficient and take exams and successfully pass those exams um, to ensure that we, we are proficient in the weapons that we are assigned. Um, and then there's a physical fitness test. Um, so that physical fitness includes um, sit-ups, uh, a 300 meter dash, push-ups and a mile and a half in that exact order. And you have to achieve a certain uh, time to get a certain score um, and pass. Um, and so you have to do that at the academy. And interestingly enough, that's what you do to get in. It's exactly what you do every single day for the rest of your career. So as an agent, I, I need to take my fit test every year. I, I qualify with my uh, bureau issued weapons um, every quarter. We conduct um, uh, ongoing tactical training, those are perishable skills, right? How do you do room entry? How do you handcuff properly? What's the protocol? Uh, ensuring that we're constantly um, making sure that we're doing things safely. Um, so those are some of the things that we uh, learn at the academy. How long is the course of study at the academy? Five months. Okay, did you go straight into the academy when you hired on or is that something that you work your way up to? 
so it is part of the uh, uh, the part of the process of of becoming an FBI agent. So once you're going through the application process and you successfully pass every aspect of it, and you are vetted and you can get a top secret clearance, which is the standard, then you get sent to the FBI Academy. And if you successfully pass the FBI Academy and all the exams administered, then you are uh, you take your oath as an FBI and you're an FBI agent. And then uh, you get assigned to whatever field office the FBI decides they need you in and to whatever squad they need, they believe they need you in. Okay, so uh, here's another question. Um, yes. How can someone best prepare themselves mentally and physically to become an FBI agent? Like if you could go back in time and tell yourself everything that you need to do, to be like, you know, to be a shoe in for your job, what would you say? So there are three things that I, um, typically tell uh, prospective applicants to think about. So I'm, it's gonna deviate a little bit because based on, so I know that this call is um, attended by different age groups, right? So I'm gonna kind of try to modify it, but the goal is the same. So first and foremost, uh, whether you're in high school, you're probably, if you're in high school, you maybe haven't done a resume yet, but maybe you have. If you're in uh, a, uh, maybe in college or um, uh, maybe already in the workforce, you're probably already done a resume. Regardless, though, you're probably used to making sure your resume is very brief and short and one page. So I want you to sort of disregard that because that's not what you want for your resume to look like if you're applying to the FBI, specifically not to the special agent for sure. So one of the resources is, so I put the FBI jobs website on the chat. And what you would do is if I were looking at the FBI website, I would see that there's a series of blue tabs at the top. The very first one would be career path. The very first link would be special agent. And if I'm looking at that page, you would see four PDFs. The first would be the all you need to know. The second would be the testing overview. The third would be the uh, PFT guide, which is a physical fitness test guide. And the fourth would be the BFTC, which refers to the training academy in Quantico, Virginia. And so I want you to focus your attention on the very first document, all you need to know to apply. It's a PDF, it's long, but specifically page 17. And why, why page 17? Because page 17 lists the eight core competencies that we want to see in your resume. So when you're, when you're thinking about, you know, you need a degree, that degree could be any degree. So I have, a, I have a degree that's not criminal justice. I have colleagues in the FBI who were teachers, who were accountants, who were computer science, social workers, veterinarians. But what we all have in common is that our work experience allowed us to speak to these eight skill sets and those can be gained from any any career um, and what they are are leadership communication interpersonal skills initiative problem solving and judgment organizing and, and planning and accountability and to name a few and so when you're out there the goal is the same right as you enter the workforce or if you're in college getting out there to volunteer or work or if you're if you're like me you know working and going to school um, the goal is the same. You want to make sure that your job, you're constantly evaluating. And one of the ways you can do that is if you have a resume, which by the way, there's a federal resume template on the special agent website. So you can download it and use that format. In fact, that is a required format. So if you're in high school, by the time you apply, that format might change a little bit, but never too early to start, right? Drafting your resume. And so if you're looking at your resume and you're looking, okay, well, currently I'm a teacher's assistant or currently I'm working um, you know, in retail or whatever it might be, um, you're looking to see, well, what does my job allow me to speak to? Have I been a leader and how, right? And leadership is much more than just telling people what to do. It's much more than that. It's about mentoring and empowering others, right? So encouraging others to apply for that job that you're also going to, um, or, or teaching, uh, training people and things like that. And, and so that's a good gauge of where you're at. And so as you go through your, through your um, work experience, you want to feel confident in speaking to those skill sets because when you submit your resume to headquarters, that's what they're looking at. They're looking to see, do you have that foundation? Because the FBI knows they can teach Emily and Lynn and Amanda and everyone else how to shoot a gun. They can teach you the foundation of interviewing and what the protocol is and what the policy is they can teach you the classroom tactical training and then simulate that in Hogan's Alley. But we cannot teach you how to have initiative or to want to work in a team environment or to want to serve the entire US, everyone in the US, right? All these awesome cultures and people that live in this great country, right? 
Um, and, and so those are the skills we want you to bring with you. Because when you're in the academy and they ask you, they ask Lynn, you know, to be the team leader uh, on, an, on an arrest and she's never done that before. I'm pretty sure Lynn's gonna be slightly nervous. I know I was, right? But guess what? You're gonna remember your classroom training. And by the time you get to the academy, guess what you're gonna have? You're gonna have life experience and work experience. Because, because the thing is, textbooks can only teach you so much, but life is messy, right? It's complicated. We all do the best we can. We're trying to like problem solve, right? Some of the, some of the students, I'm pretty sure on this call, have had to stay up late to, to do homework. Maybe a friend needed help and you, you know you have a test the next day, but you wanted to be there for a friend and you stayed on that call till 12 a.m., but you still got to study for that test. And so that grit, that, that um, self-reliance kicks in and you're like, you know what? Maybe I don't, I haven't done this before, but that doesn't mean I can't and I just do it. And with everything else in life, right? You get better at your craft with time. Um, so, so that's part of it, right? The resume and what needs to go in there, those skill sets. And then the third aspect of it that I wanna sort of hone on is the physical fitness. Now, every single one of us can prepare for that fit test every single one of us it's not rocket science it's like everything else in life if you want to get better at something you just got to do the work nothing comes easy right even the the professional you know nba players the wnba basketball players they're awesome because they work hard they didn't just wake up one day and become great ballers right so uh, everyone starts at the beginning it's usually a you know that's the way it works hard work I know it's long-winded, sorry. <laughs> no, was... thank you. I want to be an FBI agent now. Good, oh yes. Yeah. We're hiring. Cool. We're hiring. But, um, <laughs> but, like, that was so awesome. It was so, it was so interesting to hear all of that. Um, and I'm wondering, you said there are so many jobs in the FBI. Yes. I'm wondering if you could say, other than your job, which you're obviously yes. awesome at, you just convinced me that I want to be an FBI agent. Um, other than your job, what do you think is the most interesting and unexpected job at the FBI? Um, I think that people would be surprised to know that we hire nurses at the FBI. I find that people find that, really, you hire nurses? We do, we hire occupational health nurses. Um, we also hire biologists, which maybe might be sort of uh, intuitive because we do have a couple of labs um, in the FBI, one in Quantico and one in Huntsville. Um, and then we also hire people that work automotive um, and technicians that work with our radios. Um, so we have, we have analysts, we have people that work in human resources, forensic accounting, uh, computer scientists, information technology. There's so many different uh, amazing jobs. And, and you know, you, you make a great point. Like my job is only one job. And this, is, this organization is, is great because it's all about the collective effort, right? Every single piece of it matters because we're all going, we're all pursuing the same goal and we can't do it on our own. We need each other to do it because not everyone has, not everyone knows everything. Um, and so certainly like, um, I remember my, one of my very first cases, I had uh, five different uh, groups of uh, Medicare beneficiaries that uh, we were interviewing. And I, I only know one other language, Spanish. So I was able to assist with those interviews, but I had um, uh, beneficiaries that spoke Laos, uh, that spoke Mandarin, that spoke um, Russian Armenian, and I did. I I don't know how to speak any of those languages. I wish I did, um, and so I was fortunate that I had linguists, uh, my colleagues who knew those languages, and we went out on interviews and did those interviews concurrently. So imagine if we didn't have other skill sets in the bureau, we would be ineffective in the way we serve our country. Cool. Oh, I think we're at time. Thank you so much. This was so informative. Absolutely, my there's pleasure. There's a, a video coming up. Yes, I video? know. Yeah, is okay. that, I know you have your video. Let's just show it because I think it would give a lot of great insight into sure. uh, you know, careers with the FBI. Absolutely, I will do that. One second. Let me know if you can see my screen. Oh, we can see it. Okay, great. I'm going to forward to the video now. Hi, I'm Rob Morrow. Over the years, I've acted and directed dozens of films and television shows. I've played a major drug dealer, a doctor in a quirky town in Alaska, a lawyer who discovered the most popular police show in America is fixed, and an FBI agent who runs a violent crime squad out of the LA office. For each part, I do a lot of studying and research. For Special Agent Don Epps in the TV series Numbers, I visited the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. 
I got to see firsthand the training and conditioning that agents must go through. A variety of challenging skills agents must not only learn, but master in just a few short months is daunting. Over time, these skills will be absolutely critical in fighting terrorism and bringing criminals to justice. Not everyone has what it takes to become an FBI agent. Some trainees won't make it to graduation day, but the stakes have to be high because out on the street, they're even higher. The FBI Academy is an impressive institution. Oh, sorry. Did it stop? Yeah, it did. I don't know why I did that. Oh, there. Sorry, there we go. Caliber. I salute the men and women who have accepted the challenges and endured the hardships of the new agent training program. You've truly earned the right to be called special agents of the FBI. My wishes for you are these, that each of you will continue to learn important skills, meet personal challenges, and build close friendships as much as we have during the past 21 months. Thank you. graduation day so this is uh, what we've been looking forward to all month. I wanted to do this really since before law school. Yeah. Always had a dream of being an Asian. I'm looking forward to uh, start my career. The most difficult part of training is definitely being away from family. Legal was probably the most challenging. Academics, physical fitness has been uh, very challenging of course. The uh, OC spray. It would definitely be the OC spray. Pepper spray. We were told it was the worst 45 minutes of your life and it was. pile everything on top of each other, all the different tests, whether they be physical or academic. They expect more. Everything that you do is expect more, and it, it prepares you for life uh, and what it's going to be out in the world. There's just so much that comes at you, and it's a task in and of itself just to manage your own time and make sure that you take care of everything you need to take care of. science, interview and interrogation, legal, drug enforcement, intelligence, counterterrorism, forensic science, and ideology, terror networks, mass suicide bombers, victim operations, finance, FBI database, email analysis, employment, electronic evidence, NCIC, So we're being told uh, where our first office is going to be and uh, what career track we're going to be put on. My first choice is Miami, and I think I'm going to New York. <laughs> <laughs> New York City. Okay. It's going to have a big impact on everybody, whether they're single or married. My first choice, I should say my wife's first choice mm -hmm. in Chicago. 
I think I'm going to Puerto Rico. Chicago. Uh, my first choice is San Diego, and I think I'm going to LA. I got LA. like that one so I brought one <laughs> my first choice was Portland was Portland um, I think I'm probably going to Philadelphia Seattle number two learn what it's like to fight someone that's stronger than us and the men need to know that women can be deadly and dangerous as well. In defensive tactics, everyone's just another body. I anticipated. It was one of the worst things I've ever experienced. It's better than dying, right? expectations that it wasn't going to be that bad because that's what my brother told me. 
the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations, you are now special agents of the FBI. There it is. Wow, that was really great. A lot of information. What do you think, Amanda? I don't think I want to be an FBI agent anymore if I have to get sprayed in the face oh, with yeah, pepper spray. Amanda, it's very short lived. You'll be fine. Oh, it goes away to <laughs> Also, I'm too old, but it feels very exciting. This is, I think Emily was saying that she never had to get sprayed. So. <laughs> no, thank goodness. If I did, I would not be sitting here today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we're going to open it up to, uh, to Q&A with our audience. I know um, they, I, we did get a lot of questions coming in. I did have one coming in earlier. Um, this one specifically says, uh, does anybody here watch Criminal Minds, Quantico, or any law enforcement shows? How unreal would you say these shows are as someone who works for the FBI? <laughs> So uh, for uh, Yvette or Emily, are, are any of those shows similar to what the FBI really is like? No, <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, some of it can be kind of like the camaraderie and like the, like, it, like as a family is definitely, um, that's true. We do become like an FBI family. Um, but in terms of like, you know, an agent is, you know, running database checks and then all of a sudden is like, searching a house and then all of a sudden is doing this and then doing this. They don't necessarily do everything. There's many different people moving parts in an investigation. And so also too, it doesn't take an hour. <laughs> um, most cases can take years um, sometimes. And so, um, and, but some of it, I mean, for the most part, it's an interesting, I mean, obviously if that was like day in and day out, you'd be exhausted all the time. So, I mean, if you really want that to be your every day, then, so be it, but um, it can be, um, but it can be just as cool as this show on TV for sure. Very cool. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I had another question here coming in from, um, I'm trying to read it. How can someone prepare themselves uh, to become an FBI agent mentally and physically? So this is well, question for you, that. Sure. Um, there's a couple of resources. The first is the um, one of the PDFs that I mentioned, the PFT guide. That was actually drafted and created by our uh, physical fitness advisors in Quantico, Virginia. Um, and then there's also an FBI Fit app that you can download. And it gives you um, the exact protocol of all the different um, aspects of the exam. Um, you know, it's, it involves running uh, a mile and a half, and it also involves a 300 meter dash. And those are very different skill sets. So what my what our fit instructors like to tell us is like you're not going to run fast if you never run fast and you're not going to be able to um be able to spend an, a mile and a half in a certain time frame so you have to do both so one of the ways that i try to prepare um for uh, my fit test is well i like running but i mostly like trail running um, but one of the things that i try to do is to ensure that i run more than a mile and a half because to me mentally if I can run five miles, then a mile and a half seems like nothing, right? I mean, mentally, I feel confident that way, but everyone's a little different. Now, it isn't a track setting, and a track setting is typically a lot easier. So you want to uh, run in different terrains. And then as far as speed drills, you know, you could incorporate that anyway. Um, I think a lot of our applicants, uh, probably their most difficult category is the push-ups. Um, I would say that those, are, that's the probably the, the, the aspect of the fit test where we tend to give people um, guidance as far as like during the exam, we'll tell people like you're not going all the way down. So strengthening your upper body, whether it be 
through um, bench press and things like that. So the PFT, PFT guide is a great way to do that because it gives you specific exercises you can do to strengthen all aspects of a fit test, depending on where you're at. Oh, and then, sorry, I was going to say oh. mentally, just life, right? I, <laughs> I would say that, that, I mean, every single one of us have probably gone through difficult things that we have overcome at some point in our life. And if you kind of remember that, right, the things that you've gone through and here you are today, then an application has nothing on you, right? It's an application. Yeah. Okay. You can do it. Uh, I have a question here from Ed. Um, Ed asks, how does the FBI determine the most wanted list? How often is it updated? What actions, crimes make makes the fugitive a higher priority to apprehend? So this could be for Yvette or Emily. I actually don't, I don't know the specifics, Emily. I'm not aware either. I'd assume that's determined by headquarters. Um, and it would probably depend on, I would assume like, uh, threat to life, so how dangerous that individual is. Um, but I'm not entirely sure how they determine that. Uh, I know media does handle um, distributing that information and creating the posters. Um, because I also think, too, there's different types of lists. There's like an overall top 10 most wanted, but then there's ones that are like more specific categories, too, I think I've seen. But I'm not entirely sure how they determine that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Patsy here asks, on average, how much time do agents have to spend in court giving testimony? It's hard to give a percentage because it really just depends on what cases you're working. Um, it really is a mix of a lot of different things, right? If you're preparing for a trial, um, it could be a trial that's your case. And so if it's your case, you're going to spend a lot of time preparing for that trial since you're the case agent. If you assisted in an interview and it happens to be somebody else's case and you're going to be a witness in that other case agent's trial then that preparation is is a lot significantly less because you're only preparing for that portion where you're going to testify uh, but it's hard to give a specific estimate because it just depends what the scenario is um, Gila here asks um, so you can't choose where you want to live as a special agent uh, you have to go wherever they assign you is that true? There is. So yes, it, that is accurate. You do have a list that um, in the academy, you are allowed to rank your field offices in order of preference. And you're also allowed to submit investigative squads that you'd be interested in, in being part of. However, the final determination is based on the FBI. So they decide where you go. That is correct. And I see you already answered the question here. So the academy is only in Quantico and yes, they do recruit women. Mm -hmm. All right. And how is juggling family uh, life and being an agent? Does your work often impact your family life? Um, I'm sorry. I was going to make a funny joke, but I won't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, it's I think so here's the thing I think I'm kind of the worst person to to kind of ask this question to because I I think that every one of us have to juggle life right I mean and the the most uh, clear example of this is I have friends who are teachers who have a very specific structure of their day and responsibilities and if they wanted to volunteer in their kids classroom they weren't able to because they have to to be responsible for all these students and manage and things like that so um I would say that even on vacation, I still check my email. Um, you, it's, it's, you just have to have a different mindset. Um, but I, I just, I really um, like my job. So for me, it's just, it doesn't seem like it's that I'm doing anything, you know, out of, I, I guess, out of norm. It's just a way of life. Um, yeah, I try to. Um, I think what I, what I, what I can say is that. Um, I have kids now, and so I would say that since I became a parent, I became a lot more diligent of scheduling time to actually take away from work, like physically, versus before I wouldn't do that. I, I mean, there's always going to be work, and Emily will attest to that. You could be at work all the time. Um, but I think that because now I have both competing tasks, that I have to be really good about making sure that I'm also there. Uh, but but I but if I'm honest, I've missed a lot, and I've 
but I feel like it's quality over quantity. And so when I'm here, I'm here and I try to do the best I can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Ruby here asked, um, I've heard that the background check is extensive and many people don't pass. What are some things that may disqualify you from passing a background check? Emily, don't do you uh, speak to that, Emily? Yeah, never lie. I mm -hmm. kid you not. You, you could get a slap on the wrist for doing something as long as you're open about it but then you could be fired for lying and denying it. And cause you have to remember we do, it is extensive. We do talk to family members, past jobs, teachers, people you've worked with, um, family, friends, uh, landlords. So we will find out the truth <laughs> cause someone is bound to slip up and like say something. So if you do lie and say, no, I never smoked marijuana in the last three years and your best friend's like, Oh man, man, nope. Last week, he and me, were, we were just doing it all night. And it's like, well, they were gonna be like, so you say here, and then you're going to be sitting there caught in your lie, and we're not going to want have anything to do with you. And unfortunately, if you do fail, you are never allowed to apply to the FBI ever again. Um, you, especially if you're caught lying, um, they do, we do not definitely, it's not in our motto, but definitely honesty it falls under that integrity category. Um, if you lie, we want, cause it's kind of one of those things where if you're willing to lie about something we view as minimal, what are you willing to lie about in general? And so, uh, trustworthiness and honesty is, is big in the FBI. That's great information. Great to hear. Yes. Sorry. I was just going to add, is it okay if I add something? To yes, that? please do. Okay. Please do. And one of the things that our polygrapher likes to say is there are no perfect people, just perfectly honest people. And so the truth is that every single one of us have made decisions, whatever the reason was for that decision, that maybe now when we're in this process, we think, why did I do that? <laughs> right? So no one's perfect and we're not going to be perfect in this job. Every single one of us are going to make mistakes. Even when you're in the FBI, that doesn't stop you from making mistakes and being human. So if you can just remember, um, as you're kind of planning ahead and pursuing this profession, you always want to try to strive to be a better version of your former mistakes. If that's your goal, you're always improving, right? Absolutely. That is great advice. So Emily here asks, if you go into a STEM job but want to switch to a special agent later on, is it possible? So yes, trans transferring around uh, to different um, so it's not a, a transfer per se, uh, because we're ever, even employees of the FBI who want to pursue the special agent have to apply directly to the to FBI jobs like everyone else. So if Emily wanted to be a special agent, she would have to apply just like I did um, directly through the FBI jobs website. So there's no preferential treatment that would be wrong. Um, but within the organization, there's a lot of professional growth. I mean, um, Emily was talking about her friend that um, started off in animal science. Uh, Brianna, she came in through the collegiate hiring program. She's been an administrative, she's an administrative specialist. She's been an OST. Um, she served in different capacities because if you want to move to different departments or pursue other professions, you can absolutely do that. And there's internal uh, postings for those jobs, for some of those. And then there's the jobs on FBI jobs, which are different and they're posted by headquarters. So yes, absolutely. You can switch careers. Okay, that's great. That's that's great uh, news. Um, let's see here. Are you able to share what the salary looks like once you start working for the FBI or like an average salary or starting salary? Sure, absolutely. And that, and in fact, I will type on the um, chat, the, e the website. As well, I, you know, I love that you're asking about salary. I think a lot of times people are hesitant because they think that that's not a great question, but hey, you know what? Maybe Diana wants to get a Lamborghini. Can she afford it on a government salary? Who knows, right? Let's crunch the numbers, right? So, it all, <laughs> right. So, you know, everyone has different reasons of why, you know, uh, they want to know, but the important thing is, yes, that information is readily available. The OPM.gov website would be one of the, the place where you would go to. There are salary tables. So there are different salary tables. Um, if you're applying to the special agent position, then you would look at the law enforcement table. And so the starting salary for an agent um, is GS10 uh, step one. 
and that's approximately about $81,000 a year. And if you kind of want to see the salary progression, agents cap at GS-13. Now, if you want to move up the salary scale, then you would need to either become a supervisor or promote to executive management, which then would take you up to GS-14 and above. Um, if you're coming in under the Collegiate Hiring Initiative, um, which is the, one of the programs that Emily mentioned, that's designed for those students that are graduating from um, college looking for a full-time job, the Collegiate Hiring usually has a GS-7 for undergrad and GS-9 starting for um, for master students or advanced degrees. And so that you would just look directly on those scales to kind of see what's what's GS-7 step one and what that progression could look like. And then GS-9 for someone with their master's and what does that look like? And then um, if you're doing the internship, the salary is typically about $16 an hour or so. Um, the interns, a full-time job. So uh, interns work 40 hours, a, 40 hours a week full-time for 10 consecutive weeks. And then Emily, I don't know what what other information do you have about the salary you want to share with folks? You might have froze. I think she might have froze. Oh, she froze. Oh, yeah. she's kind of. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, cut out. Um, no, I. That's definitely OPM. It has everything, and a lot of those GS like uh, schedules will apply to other federal government positions too outside here. Um, so it can give you a good idea, and then. Also look at the locating in Los Angeles gets paid differently than somebody working in Denver. Um, so that will definitely bump up your pay quite a lot, actually, um, depending on the office that you're looking at. Um, so definitely look at those like the salary schedules, but it'll give you a good idea of even just in general, like federal government um, as a whole. Great. Um, I know Brianna has asked this question multiple times. What are some majors for a technical analyst? to complete and does the FBI hire, hire a lot of technical analysts? Did you know Emily or Yvette? Do you want me to answer Emily? I'm not oh. familiar with like what a technical analyst is. Um, do you have a more specific definition or like what you um, like understand that technical analysts actually do? Um, then we might be able to narrow it down because it might not be called a technical analyst at the FBI. Um, but I'm not okay. sure specifically well, what we're referring Bri Brianna, if you're still here, take a look at the FBI jobs. Um, there is a list there of different job positions that you can apply for. And uh, as, as Emily here stated before, you can major in anything <laughs> and work for the FBI. Even Yvette here majored in biology and she works for the FBI. So uh, definitely take a look at the requirements. And then, uh, and, and Natalie here, uh, Natalie asked, how do you investigate financial crimes? What are the qualifications uh, for like cyber and other paths uh, other than a CS degree? So I'm assuming that's computer science. I have no experience with cyber nor finance, but um, I think Yvette has a little bit, didn't you say a healthcare uh, fraud background? Yeah. So in so financial crimes, I mean, there's there's actually, uh, I would say that most, if you kind of look at what um, investigations do, almost every investigation that we have has some financial component to it, um, where, you know, people want to steal to get money, right? Whether it be through Bitcoin or some other, um, or using humans, you know, unfortunately, right? Um, depending on what the, the allegations are. Um, so there's different uh, roles that come to mind, right? So we hire auditors, right? Forensic accountants, right? Forensic accountants could could uh, join the FBI as a result of our collegiate program. Um, someone that is interested in, in doing that would have to have at least 24 hours of accounting or some accounting and statistics in their background to be able to get the training that happens on the job. So we train you. Um, and so what would happen is you would learn how to forensically examine financial accounts for purposes of either uh, providing a visual or some sort of work product that shows, right, this money came from fraudulent means. Then there's also, um, you know, cyber is just a big category. Cyber can include um, someone laundering money using a dynamic IP address, or it can involve, um, you know, the um, crimes against children, right, someone using the internet to traffic 
to meet with a, a child or something. So there's a lot of different ways where the internet can be utilized to commit a crime. And it, you know, um, I know we're limited on time, but so it really, what, what I would say is that maybe try to think of a role that you would want to do because there are analysts, uh, there are accountants, there are administrative staff, there are computer science, um, in computer scientists that work in all different departments of the bureau. They could be in counterintelligence, or they could be in counterterrorism, or they could be in cyber, or they could be on a criminal squad. And initially, when you join the FBI, you might join in as a information technology um, uh, person in the IT, but then you might decide you want to be a information technology uh, forensic examiner, which means that now you're going out to warrant to searches to get digital devices. We are retrieving as a result of a search warrant that now are getting imaged um, in order to gather evidence. And so there's so many different avenues, um, maybe trying to determine, you know, what do I want my day to day to be like is what I like to ask people. Like if you could pick what your day to day would be like, what would it look like? Would you be on the computer analyzing, looking at information, summarizing it? Or do you want some people interaction or do you want to be out in the field? And that once you kind of have an idea of what you'd like to look at, what 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 you like your day to day to look like, that can kind of sort of narrow down the possibilities, knowing that once you're in the FBI, there are so many other possibilities you can take advantage of. I remember um, at, at one point our um, office canvassed our personnel internally uh, for those who were interested in getting training in cyber because cyber is a great field, right? The IT world is ever evolving, right? Uh, I'm not in college now. So for those of you that are in college, you're learning so much, right? So many things you have to teach us about what the new um, IT resources are. So, um, you know, there was an opportunity for people in the Bureau to learn and, and move to another squad use, utilizing those skill sets that the Bureau uh, just taught them. Um, so even within the organization, we're constantly trying to encourage employees if they want to shift, you know, their mindset and do something else, they can totally do that. Okay. Well, that's a lot of great information. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead where uh, I, I hope that we answered all of the questions that were submitted uh, today with all of you. Uh, Emily here has listed her email. So if you have more questions, please do feel free to email her. And mm -hmm. so has Yvette. You guys are so wonderful. And we really do appreciate uh, the both of you and the FBI for being here today. Thank you so much, Amanda, for being my amazing co-host. Um, yeah, we have so many um, more programs coming up next week. Uh, next Wednesday, I have a program of Med Talks. We're going to be inviting a hematologist, oncologist, a doctor to talk about diseases, cancers, and end-of-life care. And then uh, next Friday, we will also have uh, people from Apple and Tesla coming back to talk about their careers in tech. And then mm -hmm. uh, the following week, you're going to have um, another career day featuring careers in retail. So please, please do take the time to fill out our surveys. That will help me and help all of us here at the library uh, plan your, you know, these programs for you. So yeah, I'm going to stick around for the next two minutes or five minutes if anybody has questions for me. But I would, um, you know, if Yvette or Emily, if you have any last words, please do share that. And yeah. <laughs> I'd like to say yeah. something. Um, is that, oh no, you go first, Emily, you go first. No, 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 go ahead. No, 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 go, go. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to say um, that there is, you know, when you're, when we're, when these events happen and you're listening to speakers, we're not, like Lynn said, we're not going to be the only speakers, right? There's going to be so many other speakers. and. You know, you can talk to Lynn and Amanda about their experiences and how they got to where they are and, and they're experts in their field. And the thing is, we all started at the beginning. So the people we are today is not a representation of what, who we were when we started. So you can do anything you want. Do not ever let anyone determine or define what you can and cannot do, ever. That's all. Goodness, it's hard to follow that. Um, <laughs> I guess I just, you know, do what you love. I mean, I know it's a cliche, you know, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And it's actually true. Um, I found myself, Monday was a holiday for us. And so I actually found myself like wishing I could work on things, but stopped myself <laughs> because, you know, you, holidays are rare. So decided not to overwork myself, but 
definitely, it'll never be the wrong choice to do something you're passionate about or that you enjoy. Um, because, you know, at least you're happy in what you're doing. Um, and I learned that from watching my father who worked a job he hated for years just because it provided food and shelter, but he was a miserable person. So I learned to value happiness a little bit more so than um, materials or, um, I mean, I'm glad I have a job that does provide security, but um, definitely make sure that I choose things that make me happy and not suffer for too long. Um, because I mean, you only get one life and if you're miserable for most of it, what was the point? So, um, I definitely say just follow your passion and do what makes you happy. Great advice from the both of you. Emily, Yvette, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amanda and Lynn. Yeah. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the work week and to everybody else. Thank you so much for taking the time to hear us. We were glad to be here. Definitely. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye Emily. Bye, Ben. Adventure. <laughs> yes, next.